Does this rock look like a human body from this angle? Or finally my imagination has gone for a holiday too. As I was pondering how short-lived our highs have become and how rippled we are with our commonplace and insignificance in front of this vast ocean, I saw this. Among my many carefully nurtured histrionics, one is to become meditative to enthralled at the drop of a hat. But come on, spotting dolphin is one such sight that even the most somber person gets taken over by a childlike delight within a split second. And then my mind went to the dangerous stonefish and I remembered novelist and poet Jack Kerouac, who said, stare deep into the world before you as if it were the void. Innumerable holy ghost, Buddhas and saviour gods there hide, smiling. All the atoms emitting light inside wavehood. There is no personal separation of any of it. A hummingbird can come into a house and a hawk will not. So rest and be assured. While looking for the light, you may suddenly be devoured by the darkness and find the true light. For the next few minutes, I thought about the tasseled scorpion fish, one of the most venomous and carnivorous animals in the ocean. That predator is saltwater crocodile, relentlessly pushed around from their territory and threatened till death, put me in a trance-like state. Steve Arvin's The Crocodile Hunter show flashed in my mind and his infectious smile with every crack he spotted. Goes to show that one can be affectionate towards vicious creatures too, not just the cute ones, a bit from a respectable distance. And then I thought about the extremely toxic and deadly box jellyfish, which can kill a human in less than three minutes. The most alluring yet deadly creature of the sea, moon jellyfish. And I grasped this, this is the home of 560 different species of corals to many other rare and spectacular species of marine life. There's also 242 species of recorded birds, out of which 39 are endemic, implying unique species with no occurrence elsewhere in the world. More than 9,130 recorded species of animals across 572 islands of this archipelago, containing 1,032 exclusive species. 2,200 varieties of recorded plants, out of which 200 are endemic, with more than 1,500 species of flowering plants and 1,300 do not occur in mainland India. 90 species of butterflies, one active stratovolcano, another dormant one, and then some active mud volcanoes. 38 true mangrove species in a luxuriant and rich tropical rainforest, with five species securing global conservation importance. Over 30 postcard fit sea beaches where people can visit and enjoy. Six tribal communities straight out of the frame of Indiana Jones. <laughs> this is an enigma. I mean, how it all happened, how, how it even came into being, much beyond India's landmass. And in case you're wondering how knowing about all this will contribute to your traveling experience, keep on watching, I got an answer for you. Sir Charles Darwin's theory is the first one which sheds light about the island's formation, which reveals how coral reefs possibly formed in Andaman. I am making an entirely separate video only on coral reefs, where I will discuss about the coral formation along with best kept secrets in terms of spots for scuba and other underwater activities. Because regular diving spots are severely distressed now due to coral bleaching. So if you just sign up for one of those regular online options, you will miss the pristine beauty of coral. In this video, I will focus on the other important theory because it will tell us how in the middle of nowhere, the last Stone Age tribes are still found in Andaman. I will also make a separate video exploring another possibility which will tell us why you should add Narkondam Island and Barren Island in your plan, even though seldom they are part of regular itineraries. <laughs> the 
my favorite physics teacher once told me that how is more important than why i didn't agree i thought knowing why is crucial it was more like einstein's supposed statement imagination is more important than knowledge both why and how actually can't do without each other but when they fight it is what that takes over series 2 will tell you exactly what you need to know about the origin of this island's formations Darwin's model's big revelation was that coral reefs are very sensitive to sea level changes. Another groundbreaking theory, pun very much intended, was proposed by a geophysicist and meteorologist, Alfred Wegener, in 1912, when he claimed that Earth's continents shift positions on the surface of this planet due to the churning and circulation of Earth's mantle. Scoffed by mainstream science and accepted much later, This is what I remember as studying in geography classes in school as the theory of plate tectonics. He said over the course of this planet's 4.5 billion year old history, Earth was once a supercontinent before splitting into several different land masses. This ancient supercontinent called Pangaea, surrounded by a single ocean called Panthalassa, actually existed around 310 million years ago before breaking up about 100 million years ago as now recognized by modern science. This is the most recent supercontinent hence the most popular one but over geological time scales earth's continents are continuously changing positions so pangaea never included all the continents at any one time gondwana what is now africa south america antarctica india and australia first split from laurasia which was eurasia and north america we found fossils of similar organisms across widely separate continents which supports this theory gondwana or gondwana land was then split into india australia asia africa and south america similarly india was originally separated from mainland asia by tethys ocean the indian continent has traveled around 6000 km northward before colliding with the eurasian plate approximately 57 million years ago as indian landmass approached and finally collided with asia after crossing the ocean the magnificent himalaya was born this movement of the indian plate into the asian plate and accumulation of enormous strain made this region seismically active leading to earthquakes from time to time Seriously this resembles with the fantastic imagination or belief that this is the place where an all abnegating shiva roams with his bull to destroy humanity's desire for life and fear of death and gets occasionally angry when anyone disturbs his journey towards salvation or moksha well i like both the images without any inner conflict at all one scientifically proven yet still debatable on many accounts another one has no scientific foundation and heavily dependent on symbology and myth i think they both are trying to convey the same thing in completely different languages be that as it may similar to the formation of himalayas the andaman and nicobar islands according to the theory of plate tectonics were formed due to the collision between india plate and barma minor plate which is part of the eurasian plate the eastern himalayas extend to arakan yoma range and these islands are the southward extension of arakan yoma range in myanmar the continental shelf joining andaman with myanmar is relatively shallow and only top part of the mountains are visible on the sea surface due to further geological disturbances forming the island we typically don't associate earthquakes and tropical islands do we especially as a first time travelers in andaman is mostly those images of white sandy beaches with pristine emerald water under the blue sky with puff clouds and the prospect of diving under water and coming in close contact with beautiful marine creatures usually those things captivate our imagination however andaman and nicobar islands fall under the seismic zone 5 which means these regions are highly seismically active and they pose highest risk in terms of earthquake related damages 
Now that I have shown you why, what we're going to do about this? Isn't ignorance is bliss in such cases? Well, yes and no. Uh, while we really cannot predict or even prevent such occurrences, but knowing about this will at least help us not treat Andaman as if getting into uh, escapades to a beaches of Goa, Kerala, or even Lakshadweep as a matter of fact, which are all categorized under seismic zone 3, which means they pose moderate risk. The hazard assessment in Andaman is on a different level altogether. And I'm not even thinking in terms of colossal disasters like the 2004 Sumatra Andaman earthquake and Boxing Day tsunami. Just two weeks after I have come back, there have been a, a series of mild tremors in the Indian Ocean with epicenters being very close to Port Blair and such occurrences are pretty frequent there. Uh, while such low impact events typically do not cause much damage, but they are definitely going to impact inter-island travel plans. So it's always advisable to add a day or two in your itinerary and also carry local contacts along with some emergency helpline numbers which I have shared in my previous video. Just in case of exigencies, God forbid, it might help. Also, we typically do not carry additional cash, long sleep clothes, long pants, uh, uh, waterproof rain trenches, uh, study shoes, thick uh, socks while traveling to a place which we preconceive as a beach destination. However, it is highly recommended to carry those because they will not only offer uh, better safety, but they will also help you negotiate other terrains like getting into mangrove forest or getting into wetland for birding or if you want to get into volcanic regions which are pretty close to coastline. While we all want our uh, journey to be you know, hassle-free as much as possible and we only want pleasant surprises, but when it comes to Andaman, I would always prefer and recommend informed peace over ignorant peace. Join me in this journey called Andamania and welcome back my repeat audience. Next time if someone tells you that uh, they are planning to make an Andaman trip because they prefer uh, beach over mountains, uh, tell them that in almost all probability, Andaman Islands are summits of submerged mountain ranges which are a continuation of Himalaya. If you have traveled to Malaysia, Indonesia or Myanmar, you will experience that the flora evolved in Andaman shows closer resemblance to those places. Some scientists believe that this landmass before sinking allowed the early Negrito tribe to pass from the mainland to this island. These humans colonized the Andaman and Nicobar Islands while migrating along the tropical coast of the Indian Ocean to Southeast Asia and Australia about 45,000 to 50,000 years ago. So while Darwin's theory, as I will show you in my next upload, throws light on how reef originated, this one shows why the island itself originated, along with how possibly tribes came here. Continental drift theory provides us with some understanding about the earliest genetic footprints in the subcontinent. Now, when you are going to travel in Andaman, knowing about what it took to make it possible that while traveling, we can now relish those grilled lobsters barbecues of sardines or some vegetarian delicacy of our choice, apart from dwelling on the usual mouth-watering nudges, you may find in the hello ground of restaurant an enormous globe and find yourself wrapped with history in motion. Who knows, you may even feel a backslapping bond me with strangers and think we are in this together, let's celebrate with a beer or two.